Hello and welcome to another video tutorial brought to you by Octotouch.com. This video is part of a four part video series that teach you guys how to take a website template made in Photoshop and turn it into an actual fully working HTML slash CSS template so you could use it for an actual website. Now this video is the last one in that series and it takes off directly where the last video left off. So let's recap. In the first video, I taught you guys how to set up your website folder to get it ready to make a website. And we have this example right here. In the second video, I taught you guys how to, um, how to make the actual PSD for the website. In the third video, I taught you guys how to type up the markup language for the website. So now we just have a pure HTML website. And finally, in this video, the last video, I will be teaching you guys how to take that HTML website apply a CSS style sheet to it and get it looking the way you want it to look. So with that being said, let's take a look at exactly what I just described. Over here is a pure HTML version of the template that we just made. And we're going to take this and turn it into this by the end of the tutorial. Obviously, it's a dramatic improvement. And all this is done with just one CSS style sheet. Now throughout the course of this tutorial, you're going to need a couple things uh, to make sure everything works out. First of all, keep in mind that if you're on a Mac or even if you're on any other computer, I will be using Firefox for the web browser in this tutorial. Right now, I'm using Safari, but I will just be closing this out when the time is right, and I'll be using Firefox to preview everything. And there's a reason for that. With Firefox comes the web, developer, the web developer toolbar. And I have this web developer toolbar already downloaded, and it's on Firefox right now. Now, what this allows us to do is to check our HTML to validate it, to view our CSS, and to even edit our CSS and see it in real time. So that's going to help out a lot. So I'll put the link to this in the video description below, along with the link to download Firefox. And lastly, before we get started, you're going to need to head over to this link. It's myweb.com slash a bunch of stuff. The link will be in the video description below. This is so you could get this reset CSS code that pretty much is a generic CSS code that's going to help you guys get started. So you want to get all of this from this website, download the add-on uh, for Firefox, and then just copy this, and let's head into Dreamweaver and get started. So let's click on File, Open, and let's open up that pure HTML file that we have. Um, I already have that open, so I won't be opening it up again. But as you can see in Dreamweaver, when we open that up, we have source code and we have style.css. Why? Because we added this line of code in the previous tutorial. We told this HTML uh, template or this HTML file to look at this style sheet. But if you click on it, there's nothing there. It says, it says style.css is not on the local disk. Why? Because we haven't made it yet. So let's click on file new and let's make style.css. For the page type, click on CSS, press create, and there we go. So now before we do anything else, Let's, let's actually paste this in and then let's click on file save as and we'll head into that folder, head into the CSS folder within that folder and save it as style.css and press save. Now if we head back to index.html and we click on the source code and back to style, you see that our style sheet is now open. So we could close this. Now we just go to our source code and back to style and back and forth. That's how we'll be editing it from now on. Now really quick, let's click on file and let's preview in Firefox. I want to show you guys the difference this CSS already made. This was, uh, this is the new one. And let me show you the previous version. As you can see, there's already a pretty drastic difference. So with that being said, I'm going to close Safari now that we don't need it anymore and I'll close Firefox and let's head into actually editing this style.css page. There are a couple things that I want to add before I head into Firefox and start editing the CSS in real time. These are, these are just minor things that um, just pretty much need to be added. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get started. We'll start by typing A and let's open and close that. And we'll type in text dash decoration none. So this is for all the links in our website. There is no text decoration, nothing like an underline, nothing like a strike through, nothing like that. So no, no text decoration. 
and then let's press enter and type in color black. And that's it for A. And then we'll press enter twice, type in A dot hover. Now this is for every time uh, we someone hovers over any of the tech or any of the um, the links on our website. So all we want to add is text decoration underline. So every time someone hovers over a link, it will underline it. Press enter twice again, and this time we want to target all of the headers. So we'll do header one, header two, header three, header four, header five and header six. We're only using like two of these in our actual website, uh, but we want to just include all of them. So we want to make sure that just in case in the future, if you want to add more headers, it are, it's already covered in the CSS. We'll start by applying a font family to these headers and our entire website is based in Helvetica. So we'll start typing Helvetica and this will pop up. That looks good. And we'll put a semicolon and press enter. You want our font weight to be normal. The text transform to uppercase. Line height to 100%. And margin top to zero pixels or just zero. So what this is going to do is make sure that we have no space at the top of any of our links. Um, our line height is 100%. And most importantly, the most obvious one here is text transform. All of our links are going to be automatically made uppercase. So let's press enter twice and let's just only focus on the H1 tag, the header one tag. Um, what we want to do is spe specify the font size for this tag. Obviously, all of these, you don't want them to all have the same font size. That's the whole purpose of header tags. So we'll give each one a font size of 20 pixels and a color of 000. That looks good. And then now let's focus on the H2. Font size. And let's give this something around 16 pixels and the same color of zero 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 okay enter twice now let's focus on h3 and this is the last thing we're going to focus on just because this is the last thing that we're using in our website and we're not using any of the other ones if we do decide to use any of the other ones we could come back and specify the size h3 will have a font size of 12 pixels and the same color as all the rest and there we go we are good for this area now what we're going to do is click File, Save, and then File, Preview in Browser, and let's preview in Firefox. So now we have all the H1, H2 tags all set, and as you can see, we're already looking, um, we're already seeing some change. So now what we could do to start editing the CSS in real time is click right over here in the Web Developer Toolbar where it says CSS, and click Edit CSS. So now we have all the CSS that we just had. We could press enter twice down here. And what we're going to do is just leave us a little note that says that we're editing the main CSS. Okay, that looks good. So now after this, we know that everything after this is going to be the actual important stuff. And actually, I'm going to press enter a bunch of times. So when it's zoomed in, on the video recording, you guys could see it better. Okay, so that looks good. So now let's get started uh, in the main CSS by attaching a background color. So let's type in HTML, close that up, and we'll type in background color, and we'll give this a hex code of E8, F6, F8. And this is that light blue color that we had on the background of our um, of our Photoshop template. Okay, and let's press enter one more time. And now we could type in the container. Now, if you remember me talking about the container div tag in the previous tutorial, I mentioned that the container pretty much contains everything within our website. All the main content is contained by the container div. 
So what I'm going to do is just generally add some stuff that I want applied to everything. I want the overall width to be 980 pixels. I want to give it a border. Remember, we applied that uh, one pixel border with the color that we got from cooler.com. So one pixel solid. Um, and then the hex code for this is A9C3CC. We want a background of white and margin of 2M's auto. So what this is going to do is bring down our uh, website a little over here, the margin top right there. And then as you can see, our background of the container is white and the background of the whole website is that light blue color that we assign. And if you look closely, we have the border of that um, little darker blue color. And now that I think about it, it'll probably be a good thing to have an example of the final website open. I could only go off of memory for so long. So I'm going to take a second here and open up the final version of this. And I'll open this in, let's see, we don't have Firefox here, so I'll just open it in Safari. Okay, so we have the final website and we have this. So as you can see, it's starting to look a little more and more like the final website. So now we're gonna go ahead and add some more. We're gonna target the header. So let's put hashtag header. And we want the overflow to be hidden. The height to be 100%. And you generally just need this for Internet Explorer. Um, Internet Explorer is pretty much graphic designers and web designers were nightmare. And you need to do little things like these uh, to keep it from, uh, from getting confused. So we're going to press enter again. Or actually, I think that's all we need for a header. Let's go a little further by targeting the header image and making it look the way we want it to look. So let's type in hashtag header IMG. And what we're going to do is make it float left. Okay. And as you can see, right away, we see a change. And then let's continue on by giving it a margin right of 10 pixels. Uh, I'll be applying this margin right to pretty much everything. Uh, we want a little gap right over here on, uh, or actually the margin left is going to be applied to everything. We want a gap on the left side of uh, the website. So we added the margin right for, uh, for the social network icons, but let's continue on by typing a margin left. And give that 10 pixels. And then one more thing that we need to add is a margin top of about 20 pixels. And that should do it for the header image, uh, which is pretty much the logo. And as you can see, we have it positioned exactly where we want it to be positioned. So let's keep moving on. So the next thing we want to focus on are these uh, social network icons. To do that, we type in hashtag header ul hashtag social remember in the previous tutorial i added uh it i gave them their own id why because of this so i could come back and directly just edit them i gave them the id of social so we'll open and close it and we want them to float right and then we want them to have a margin right of 10 pixels position to be relative and give them a top of about 20 pixels just like we did to um, to the logo. It looks like these social network icons aren't going to move until we uh, position our navigation. Uh, you see all these things for the navigation are getting in its way. So let me take a quick look back. We have the, um, the logo position. We should have the social network icons position, but this navigation is getting in the way. So now we want to put a bar right here to add this navigation. So let's, let's return back to Firefox. And to do that, let's type in hashtag nav. Remember, we gave that its own div ID of nav. Let's open and close it. And we want to give it a background color of EC, EC, EC. Pretty much have that color memorized by now. And then we want to give it a height of about 30 pixels. A width of 960 pixels. 
We're going to be applying that width to a lot of other things too. Margin left, as I said, we want to give that a margin left of 10 pixels. Padding top, 10 pixels. And padding bottom, uh, 5 pixels. Okay, so now what this is essentially going to do is set the background color to whatever color we want. It's going to set the height and the width to whatever size we want. The margin left is going to give it a little, uh, a little border on the left side so it moves a little uh, to the right. It's going to give it a padding top so it gives it a little extra space at the top of 10 pixels and padding bottom a little extra space at the bottom of 5 pixels. And let's continue on. Press enter twice and let's type in nav span. Now also remember in the previous tutorial uh, we wanted the little uh, separators for the navigation to have their own color. We wanted the navigation to be white with uh, the span to be or the navigation to be black with uh, um, the borders to be white. So I gave them their own thing of span. So now we could come back in the CSS and edit the span to make it white. So we'll open and close it and simply just change the color to white. And just like that, that's all we really need, needed to do for those. And if you look over here, these uh, the home is black while this low border is white. Now, everything isn't really positioned yet, but we're not done with the navigation. So hopefully everything will actually everything will fall into place when we're done with the navigation. Press enter twice, hashtag nav. We still got a little bit to go for the navigation. We're going to click or we're going to type in L I A. And what this is going to do is specifically target the navigation text and the navigation link. So we're going to open and close it. We're going to give it a color of black to make sure that color doesn't change. And then we're going to go down and give and type in hashtag nav L I A hover. So this is what we're going to do when they, uh, this tells it what to do when someone hovers over the text. We're going to open and close it. We just want to make sure that this has a text decoration of none. Previously, we gave all of our links a text decoration of underline. So if we don't add this, if someone hovered over the navigation, um, it will automatically underline it. But we don't want that. We want the text decoration to be none. And that looks like it's pretty much it for the navigation. Now we're going to continue on to the feature. We have this banner over here. We want to make sure that this banner is in its right area. It's positioned in the center and uh, everything should look good with the banner. So we're going to press enter twice and put hashtag featured. Open and close it. Overflow. Hidden. Padding right. 10 pixels and margin top 10 pixels. That looks good. As you can see, it brought our um, our border a little bit, or our banner a little bit down and gave it a padding right of 10 pixels. And then what we're going to do is specifically target the banner image. So we'll put hashtag featured image dot featured image. Remember, I gave uh, this image its own class. So we could go back to the CSS and do this. I gave that all just for this reason. So we'll open and close that. We're going to make it float to the left and give it a margin left of 10 pixels, just like everything else. And this is where the core um, editing of the banner uh, comes in. Not only are we going to give it a margin left, but we're going to give it a border. And I'll show you guys what I meant by that border in a second. We're going to give it a border top of 5 pixels, solid, with a hex code of EC, EC, EC. Now, in the um, original PSD file, there is a slight border over here. Let me zoom in so you guys can see. There's a slight border over here on top of the banner. So what we did is add that uh, by using this CSS code. So that looks good. Press enter twice. And we're going to finish off the featured uh, by adding the drop shadow. We can't forget about the drop shadow. So we're going to do hashtag featured image dot drop shadow. I also gave that 
its own class just for this reason. So we're going to float it to the left and just give it a margin left of 10 pixels. Nothing too fancy. And that concludes it for the featured area. Now what we're going to do is focus on the main area. Remember I mentioned that the main uh, div tag had like four other div tags inside of it? Well, this is where this is going to take place. Hashtag main. Open and close it. We want our position to be relative. And we want to give it a background color of that light gray. EC, EC, EC. And if we head back over here, you see that our container over here is white. Um, our content is white, but then we also have the background of gray for the main content, just like in the original PSD. So let's head back and continue with the main. We want to give it a height of 600 pixels, a margin top of 10 pixels, just to give it a little uh, padding from the banner. And then we want to give it a margin left of 10 pixels, just like everything else, and a margin right of 10 pixels, which isn't really necessary, but it doesn't hurt. This is for the text anyways. So that sums it up for the main. Now we're going to continue on to the second div, or the first div tag inside of the main div tag. And that is main hashtag content. We want to focus on all of the content on this website, which was just a line of text but as I said yours would be more so for the content we're gonna give it a font size of 18 pixels a margin top of 10 pixels a margin left of 10 pixels margin right of 10 pixels and a height of 400 pixels. And that looks good. So now if we go to our website, uh, we see welcome, welcome to octotoots.com, all this information, and we have uh, a lot of space before these uh, three columns. Okay. And then we're gonna press enter twice and continue on. We want to edit the main P. P stands for paragraph, and uh, we're going to edit all of the uh, text put under paragraph in this main section, which is pretty much targeting these three columns. So we'll open and close it. And we want to give it a font size of 12 pixels and a line height of 22 pixels. That's pretty much all we need. So if we head back over here, you already see a change uh, just by these couple lines of CSS. So let's double click and continue on with the main and let's focus on the H1 tag. The H1, the header one tag pertains to this welcome thing. As you can see, it's a little too close to the edge um, of the gray area. So what we wanna do is give it a little padding on the top to make it come down a little. So we'll open and close it. Padding top 10 pixels. And if we look over here, you see now it came down a little bit. So that pretty much sums it up for, um, for the content area. Now what we want to focus on are these three columns. So we'll double click enter or double tap enter. And let's get started by hashtag col1 comma hashtag col2 comma hashtag col3 and we'll open and close these. We wanna add a couple of CSS code, a couple lines of CSS code to directly target all three of these before we individually target them. So we want them all to float left, give them all the width of 275 pixels, and margin right of three M's. And that looks good, and as you can see, they're starting to fall into place. So now it just takes a little bit of fine tuning with the individual columns to make them actually look the way they're supposed to. So let's go ahead and target column one first. Open and close it. And we're going to give this a margin left of 10 pixels, just like everything else. And we're going to target column two H2. Open and close it. 
and uh, this is for uh, the column two where it says what we do. We want this to be centered. Let's take a look at that. You see who we are is uh, by default to the left. What we do is centered and why choose us is all the way to the right. So we're, that's what we're going to do for this. We want the H2 of column two to float left. And we're going to give it a margin left of 80 pixels. So it appears to be in the center. Press enter twice. And then we're going to target column three. Open and close it. And we want column three to have a margin right of zero. Margin bottom of 20 pixels. And that's it. So let's press enter twice again. And let's type in hashtag column three or call three H2. We're going to target uh, the the Y choose us now, the H2 Y choose us. And we're going to make this go all the way to the left. So let's open and close this. And for the H2, we want to type or all the way to the right. We're going to type in float left, uh, which is contradictory to what I said. But then we're going to type in margin left 125 pixels. And this is going to make it go to the right. So that looks good. And now all we need is the footer. So let's take a look at our website now. We have the logo. Uh, everything seems to have fallen into place finally. We have the banner with uh, the five pixel border at the top. All the content looks good. All of this looks good. And it looks pretty similar to what I had made previously. Now we just need to focus on this footer area right over here. So let's head into Firefox. And let's get started with hashtag footer. The footer should have a margin top of 20 pixels. A margin left, just like everything else, of 10 pixels. A margin bottom of 10 pixels. And we want to clear and type in both. And then let's press enter twice. Now we want to specifically um, specifically direct this code towards uh, footer li, which is the list that we made uh, of contact, advertise, sitemap, privacy, and top, all that navigation stuff. And we want our display to be in line. Now what this is going to do is make them line up right next to each other instead of being on top of each other. And that's it for that. So we're going to press enter twice and hashtag footer span. I directed the span towards um, pretty much everything in the footer. So we're going to edit this to give it a custom font size of 14 pixels. And then we're going to press enter twice and target footer span A, which is all of the links in the footer. And we're going to give the links in the footer a custom color of 545454, which is a gray color. And if we look at our website, we see that um, the text that doesn't have a link is black, while the text that does have a link is uh, that custom gray, gray color that we gave it. And finally, our last piece of code, um, what we want to do is make sure that this, uh, when we hover over this link in our footer, the text decoration is underlined. So to do that, we'll type in footer span a dot hover text decoration underline. And that is it. We are finally done. Now, I forgot to mention this before, but every once in a while, you're probably going to want to copy all the CSS code that you have um, written in the web developer toolbar, uh, just in case maybe your computer shuts down or uh, Firefox quits on you. You want to keep this copied so you don't type in all this code like I just did and uh, it closes down and you have none of it left. So you want to keep this copied, but either way, when you're done, you want to copy it, head back to Dreamweaver in this style sheet and paste it and then click file save. And now when we actually check out our, um, our website, we'll see that it looks the way that it should look. So this is what we just made. And this is the website that I made previously. And it looks exactly the same. 
So that's it for this video tutorial and that is it for this video series in general. It took a long time. It might have been pretty boring. Actually, probably it was pretty boring. Uh, but ultimately, in the end, I hope that you guys learned a lot from this. And I hope that you uh, got all the information that you can from this. And I hope that you could take this and apply it to your own template and uh, make a pretty cool thing like I just made in this tutorial. As you saw, the CSS coding wasn't really complicated. It was just a bunch of float left and margin left and margin right and uh, padding top, padding bottom with height, color. It's just a couple little snippets of code that you add to add different colors and arrange different ways to make everything look like the PSD that you previously made in Photoshop. And you just need to use all the knowledge that you have from all the CSS code to manipulate all the text and all the background colors and all the images and everything to be aligned and look the same way as uh, your PSD file. So that's ultimately your goal when you're converting a PSD file to an HTML slash CSS file. So that's it for now. All links will be in the video description below. Don't forget. And if you haven't seen any of the other videos, all those links will also be in the video description below. All right. I'll see you guys later.